Chapter thirty four of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bridget Gage. Chapter thirty four. How it came out. We are all children in reading stories. We want more than all else to know how it all came out at the end. And if our taste is not perverted, we like it to come out well. For my part, ever since I began to write this story, I have been anxious to know how it was going to come out. Well, there were very few invited. It took place at ten in the morning. The preacher in charge came, of course. Miss Nancy Sawyer was there. But Ralph's uncle was away, and Aunt Matilda had a sore throat and couldn't come. Perhaps the memory of the fact that she had refused Mrs. Thompson, the pauper, a bed for two nights, affected her throat. But Miss Nancy and her sister were there, and the preacher. And that was all besides the family and Bud and Martha. Of course Bud and Martha came, and driving Martha to a wedding in a jumper was the one opportunity Bud needed. His hands were busy, his big boots were out of sight, and it was so easy to slip from Ralph's love affair to his own, that Bud somehow, in pulling Martha Hawkins' shawl about her, stammered out half a proposal, which Martha, generous soul, took for the whole ceremony, and accepted and Bud was so happy that Ralph guessed from his face and voice that the agony was over, and Bud was betrothed at last, to the gale as was a gale. And after Ralph and Hannah were married, there was no trip. Ralph only changed his boarding place and became head of the house at Mrs. Thompson's thereafter. After it was all over, Bud came to Mr. Hartsook, and snickering just a little, said as how him and Martha had fixed it all up, and now they wanted to ax his advice. And Martha, proud but blushing, came up and nodded assent. Bud said as how he hadn't got no book learnin' nor nothin', and as how he wanted to be somethin', and put in his best licks for him, you know. And that Marthy, she was of the same way of thinkin', and that was a blessin'. And the squire was a-goin' to marry again, and Marthy would rather vacate. And his mother and Mirandy was such as he wouldn't take no wife to, and he thought as how Mr. Hartsook might think of some way or some place where he and Marthy might make a livin' for the present, and put in their best licks for him, you know. Ralph thought a moment. He was about to make an allusion to Hercules and the Augean stables, but he remembered that Bud would not understand it, though it might remind Martha of something she had seen at the East the time she was to Boston. Bud, my dear friend, said Ralph, it looks a little hard to ask you to take a new wife. Here Bud looked admiringly at Martha, to the poorhouse. But I don't know anywhere where you can do so much good for Christ as by taking charge of that place, and I can get the appointment for you. The new commissioners want just such a man. What do ye say, Marthy? said Bud. Why, somebody ought to do for the poor, and I should like to do it. And so Hercules cleaned the Augean stables. And so my humble, homely Hoosier story of twenty years ago draws to a close, and not without regret I take leave of Rolf and Hannah, and Shockey and Bud, and Martha, and Miss Nancy, and of my readers. P.S. A copy of the Lewisburg Jeffersonian came into my hands today, and I see by its columns that Rolf Hartsook is principal of the Lewisburg Academy. It took me some time, however, to make out that the sheriff of the county, Mr. Israel W. Means, was none other than my old friend Bud, of the Church of the Best Licks. I was almost as much puzzled over his name as I was when I saw an article in a city paper by Professor W. J. Thompson on poorhouses. I should not have recognized the writer as Shockey, had I not known that Shockey has given his spare time to making outcasts feel that God has not forgot. End of chapter 34 End of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston